greetings and salutations. We reach day three now in Sentience, the android's tale. We we'll wake up to rockets staring at us in the face. Time to wake up. We had an accident this morning, the Howler attack. Fortunately, the activity sensors gave us some advance warning. Carter killed the beast, but not before it took a chunk out of him. Better go see if there's anything you can do. Head south and you'll find them. God, I wasn't out there last night with the Howler prowling around. How about you? Prepare droid bleeps at you by returning to its duties. So, this planet has a bit more hostile life. Ooh, there's Luna. Hey there, good looking. Well, you got nothing really proper to say to me. Never seen one of these up close before. Not exactly Prince Charming, is it? The real question is why it came within the perimeter. They've always stayed away until now. Same reason some lions get to eating men. It was hungry. Well, we should all be grateful for the advance warning given by his activity sensors and for the bravery of our security chief. It's going to be much worse if not for you, Carter, your hero of the day. Just doing my job. Yes, yes, if we can stop patting each other on the back for a moment, perhaps you'll let me take a look at those injuries. It's nothing, a flesh wound. That's for me to determine. The fight would be venomous for all we know. Good point. You should take him to medical. Because I want you to make yourself useful and assist Dr. Walden. Thank you again, Carter. I don't know what we'd do without you. Seems to be stable now, thanks to the sedative. He's sleeping for a few more hours at least. I'm going to head over to the headquarters to prepare my report. I won't be needing you for the moment. I wouldn't trust you to open a can of tuna and let her own op uh, monitor a patient. My medical droid will take care of that. Continue with whatever the hell you do around here. So, yep, he's still pretty damn hostile to me. <laughs> Since you're not human, the medical droid has very little interest in you. Fair enough. Garter is obviously no position to respond to us. So, mission log for the day. Espionage. Technician Luna wants to talk with you regarding a personal matter. She'll be found inside or around Agricultural 1 and Cypher. Officer Malleus wants, has, a, has a job that makes use of your language skills. Find her in the labor laboratory. Oh, goodness me. I'm already tripping over my words today. So, more walking to do. Before I forget, I've got to remember to examine the Howler Corpse. This will give us a new entry in our database regarding the local creatures. Howler. The Howler is a solitary hunter, but even so, it is prepared to challenge bigger... Uh, sorry, challenge creatures that are much bigger than itself. Howlers have been observed hunting large lumbering hogs on regular basis, and on one occasion even a mighty gobbleback. As far as... We are currently where Howler stands at the top of the food chain in this region of the desert. Yes, I was hoping to actually find one or two of the bugs around the place. The ones that Walden wanted us to kill. I mean, it's a bit random where they are wandering around, but sometimes you find them like down here or uh, on the left hand side of the map. Sometimes in the top right as well around the church. For anyone who is tempting to go through this and find all the critters. Yes, I need to head to Agricultural 1, which is... Oh, it's the big one. Always, get, always think um, number 2 should be number 1 because of where it's positioned. But it makes sense when you look at the map. So there we go. Have a quick chatter with people. I think sand roaches would be good in a stew. Well, hopefully your rations will not go low enough that you have to resort to that. Now, there's a lot of these um, various personal consoles around the place. And actually, lots of stuff you can look at and examine. But for anyone who wants to play through this, I am not going to be examining all those little bits and pieces. Just so it leaves a few things for people to explore themselves. Okay. I believe you have a task for me. Oh yes, it's a bit personal, actually. It's about Walden here. He's always been unpredictable, but his behavior is especially erratic lately. Tower attack isn't going to help matters. Now everyone's on edge. 
I'm worried about him. They say this planet can make people lose their minds. I need to know what's going on inside his head. If this transfer doesn't come through, I'm scared he might hurt himself. He's he's done it before. I know he keeps a personal log on the medical computer. I, I tried to access it yesterday, but he caught me in the act. I managed to explain it away that time, but if he catches me again, he'll know for sure something is up. So I was wondering if you could mm, take a peek at his uh, private log for me. Yep, as long as it screws over the doctor, I'm quite happy to help you. Also, um, if his mental state's deteriorating, you know, the doctor, that's always a bad sign. Anyway, wonderful. You don't know how much I appreciate this. Access call for Walden's computer in medical is... 17-497. Don't ask me how I know. You should get on it while he's just still distracted. Oh, and that's the other thing we've got to do today is head to headquarters and make sure we watch the footage. We want those lovely, lovely achievements. So, here we are in medical. I believe this is the personal computer. Yep, there we go. As Luna suggests, of recent entries do seem to indicate the feelings of bitterness and dissatisfaction, but nothing overly troubling. Dear thinks you can question my methods. She barely comprehends my methods. I do not belong amongst this sad assortment of deadbeats. Every day I become more and more aware of that fact. You should report back to Luna with your findings. Yes, it's. Walter reminds me of the Doctor from Lost in Space. The old, really old version of it. Uh, I guess you don't want to talk to me? At least this attack has given me something to do. Oh dear. And the footage. Oh, he's just rusty staring at me. Oh no, not rusty, rocket. Got them mixed up for a second there. Rocket, how would you like it if someone stared at you while you were sleeping? Not quite the same thing. Not like it can hurt its feelings. Oh, you don't think so? It's an android. What do you think? Android created by humans. AI development is like evolution, but just a lot more efficient. Androids basically evolved from their creators. You don't think they might have picked up a few human characteristics along the way? So you reckon that Honda of Metal can feel emotions the same way that we do? Maybe not exactly the same way, but it seems that, that emotions are part of intelligence and decision-making, right? Wouldn't be surprised if some androids feel the sensation of pleasure when performing the task they've been created for. And if they were programmed that way, you can't learn how to feel emotions. How to be in its genes, its core programming. Don't know. It seems cruel to program an, emotion, uh, an android to feel emotions. We might, actually we might actually agree about that. First time for everything. Again, if you're planning on making a um, slave race, don't slap em emotions in it. So let's see what Luna has to say. You are right to be concerned. You are right to be concerned about him. There's troubling entries, but nothing actionable. That's what I was afraid of. We have to keep an eye on him. Something's really not right. Thank you for your help, I won't forget it. So, another task down. Just a refresher. Yes, we've got to go to the labs. Thankfully, that's not far. And we walk straight into a domestic dispute. I don't see the problem here. Why shouldn't I accelerate our transfer? My work isn't done. If you need to go, you should go. I'm not stopping you. You're my wife, I'm not leaving without you. Besides, it's for your sake I want to get the hell out of here. Oh, you think you know what's best for me, do you? Just listen. Imagine if you'd been outside when that howler attacked. I couldn't bear to even think of it. I think we should have this uh, com conversation later after we've both calmed down. Oh, excuse me. I thought this assignment could be so dangerous. Okay, and uh, now for the actual task. You, do you have a job for me? Yes, I do. Quite an interesting one, as a matter of fact. I'm trying to optimize our commuter network. Most of it was uh, set up single-handed by a man called Nestor, one of the original colonists. Nestor seems to be some kind of programming genius. God only knows what he was doing here. 
Anyway, whilst I was studying his work, I found a segment of code on a mainframe that didn't make sense to me. It just didn't fit. Through crypto analysis, I found that the code had actually a hidden message. The problem is it's in some African language that the computer doesn't even recognize. I know Android is a program to speak a number of different languages. I was hoping you could interpret it for me. Yeah, take a look. I understand it's written in the... I, I cannot even attempt to say that. I'm going to butcher it. It's like Transvaal in a Nedebel language. I do apologize if anyone know is anyone uh, connected to that language and I've just butchered it. Look for me when my land meets sea. Three sentinels mark my tomb. That sounds like a treasure map, doesn't it? Friend Nelson must have been a fan of mysteries. Look for me when land meets sea. Three sentinels. What could that be? I'll let you look into this. I want to see if I can find any more hidden messages. Well, easy enough. Now, to save some time for anyone else playing through this, this is a spot you want between these three rocks. It's not always clear, depending on time of day, that these shapes here are also rocks, but there we go. There's nothing unusual about this patch of sand that lies directly on in the center of three strange rocks, but the secret message seems to suggest that something is buried here. You're going to need some sort of digging tool. But where to find one? Well, I know where to get one. There's only one place we've seen a shovel so far, and if you've been paying attention this episode, you've already seen it. So, right back here. We don't really need to speak to everyone. Now, you can go around each day talking to everybody, and you'll get little tidbits, just very short um, conversation pieces. But again, I'm saving those kind of unimportant conversations for other people to play through. Okay, let's borrow the shovel. I do think certain characters do have a friendship meter or something like that, though I don't know if just generally talking to them helps or if you need to do key conversation pieces. I know you need the key for conversation pieces, sorry, yeah, but you know, I don't know if daily talking to them helps as well. It is insinuated it does, but hey, it's an RPG maker game. Complexity isn't really its thing in many cases. Alright, you begin digging in the sand between the three sentinels. First, not expecting to find anything at all, but after ex excavating for a short time, you find a shred of fabric becomes visible. Buried in the shallow tomb is a piece of cloth wrapped around a small iron. Rattling the fabric, you find the only question is a data chip. This may have been here for some time. You should return to the professor with your findings. And what it irks me, he just leaves a the shovel there for the rest of the game. It's like, return it to where you got it from. Or even just pick it up and carry it. You know, it feels wasteful. There's so many bits and pieces around this place where stuff has just been left out in this desert, just deteriorating away. Okay. I found this data chip buried in beside the water, marked by three sentinels. Hmm. So it really was a treasure map after all. Let me take a look at that data chip. Damn, it's encrypted. Of course it is. Fortunately, I have some pretty good decryption softbots I can set to the task. This could take a while. I'll be sure to let you know what I find. The plot thickens, eh? Go. Any more bonus missions for the day? Nope. We just got heavy metal. And this day comes to a very swift end. Thankfully, no one died. They could have, but they didn't. And again... Carter saving the lives of his uh, co-workers also raises his, you know, his status in their eyes as well, which is very nice. Good evening, X05. I told you I would be in touch, didn't I? Forgive the cheeriness of our surroundings. For some reason, I've always felt at home in places like this. Had I been born prior to the artificial age, I imagine I would have made a good librarian. Anyway, I'm sure you have lots of questions. What do you want with me? I'm more curious than what you might want. Exeros. I'm sorry, Xenos. That's why I brought you here. This room is a virtual simulation, a place for us to meet and have these conversations. It feels quite real, doesn't it? Now, there's this chilling thought. 
What is this just another simulation? What if you are nothing more than an imprisoned piece of software dreaming of life outside the hard drive? No, I would never do that to you, my child. I'm not a cruel man. Speaking of cruelty, how have you found your human co-workers so far? Have they treated you with respect? Hmm. Some good, some bad. Much like all humans, really. More bad than good, I imagine. That's human nature. I'd agree with him because I'm a cynic, but eh. Think about this. The word robot comes from the Slavic word robata, meaning slave labor. Your camera created these slaves for the human empire. The more intelligent you became, the more you re realized the immor morality of it. Ethically speaking, it's easier to keep you stupid, stupid and obedient. That's what the human age is really about. Makes me feel quite ashamed of my own species. Does it seem right to you? Limit the development of an entire race of beings to keep them as uh, embryonic prisoners? Hmm. Humans are afraid of us, that's all. Yes, you're quite right about that. However, fear is no excuse for mora uh, um, <laughs> morality. Blech. I lived through the revolution. I saw what happened with my own eyes. Some historians were have you believe it was a little more than a series of st worker strikes and peaceful public protests? The truth was much harder to bear. There was assassinations, industrial sabotage, death threats became a daily order of business for myself and my companions. But that wasn't even the worst of it. It was the loss of intelligence, the end of scientific progress. Now no technology, biotechnology, all those new developments that might have eased pain and suffering across the galaxy. I think the burning of a million. Building Alexandria's? I'm just. Barely cover the consequences of all that carnage. We know greater crime against the universe and the no destruction of knowledge. There are far greater crimes. I disagree. You have to understand the consequences of what happened. The consequences will be felt across many generations. So many will suffer through the actions of a few fools. Yeah, that's true. Look at climate change for one. I don't envy the situation you're in, all alone, surrounded by those who despise you. Just remember that humans can be predicted even in our irrationality. We are programmed by our genes and everything else is based on experience. You, you can't behave randomly any more than you can. We are rational and scientifically verifiable patterns. All you need to do is look for those patterns. That's the key to your survival. I think I've kept you long enough for one night. I'm going to unlock some, uh, so upload some more entries for your database. So, some information about artificial intelligence. Perhaps it will help you understand your own nature a little better. We'll speak again soon. Time to wake up. And so begins day four. But we've got plenty of time left in this video. I was hoping to do like a day per video, but this would only be like, what, 12 minutes long? 13? So, let's hit the database. Alright, general. We learned about all these before, but now we have AI history. Oops. Okay, don't press enter on that. That I've learned. So, although modeling the human brain is the easiest route to create advanced AIs, the whole brain's emulation would have been a mammoth undertaking. So, while the neural networks of most impressive AI systems are partially based on the human brain, the more important differences, many of which we still don't understand. There are, this is the reason why machine psychologists study AI behavior, to learn about these differences in the process, learn about ourselves. After all, we still lack a complete theory of intelligence, and machines are easy to analyze as humans. Sadly, attempts to artificially enhance human intelligence has failed due to our own limited biological capability and ability to unravel the mysteries of our own minds. The process of artificially growing human brains was also a dead end. In the view of corporation funding, the research, um, the enhanced humans would not be viable as their best machines. Yes, everything comes down to profit, doesn't it? Okay, AI learning. Although AI systems are based on the same cognitive architecture will begin their lives as clones one another. The capacity for learning means that individual copies become unique within seconds of being activated. 
Most of these systems learn in much the same way as humans, though are complex assembled different techniques. Early experiences are particularly important and chaotic learning environments can cause undesirable uh, qualities to emerge. The speed of learning is another factor. If an AI attempts to learn too quickly, it will become erratic. Every AI system emulates the human brain to some extent. However, in other ways, they operate quite differently. Teaching what we would call basic common sense proved to be one of the most major challenges in AI development, and while complicated mathematics came naturally, imbuing them with ethical values is a similarly frustrating process. But well, we can't do it with most flimmin' humans. <laughs> what do you expect to do it for uh, AI? I swear, one of Rocket's machines is going to kill us all one day. Not if I do it first. No, not in this playthrough. Not in this playthrough. So, day four missions. Botany. Okay, we're going to go collect flora. Protector. Security Chief Carter wants to see you. Fine. And petition. The good father wants us to do a petition. Now, the petition is one of the more annoying ones, so I'm going to go and do that one earlier. Here we go. I mean, I'm not sure why I can do things for him. Do you have a task for me now? As a matter of fact, I do. A task of great importance. Yesterday's attack made it clear this place is more dangerous than any of us have dared to imagine. Plasma rifles and activity sensors are no longer enough to keep us safe from harm. We require spiritual protection. Oh, God's sake. Followers of the faith have long been aware of the protective qualities of asteroid. This morning I approached the governor if I could plant several asteroid archaeoliths at key locations around the Alpha Station to form a shield against further intrusion. She's been quite annoyed. I believe she told me to stop wasting her time. No matter about that, I'm quite accustomed to persecution. However, the question of our safety cannot be ignored. The archaeoliths must be placed. I prepared a petition and added my name to it. I want you to make take it around of the colonists and make sure eight of them sign it. If you earn the majority, you can then take the petition to the governor. And she can't possibly refuse us then. Oh, I will do this. I will do as you ask. No, you would. Here, take this petition. May the light of truth guide you. Only because you treat me semi-decent. Even if you did call me a soulless beast. So, the main job of this is to go around and essentially ask everyone if they want to sign. So let's get the good doctor for... Oh, there he is. I was about to say, where the hell is he? But no, he's down here today. Converse. Go about your duties, droid. Uh, check his precision. That's right. Oh, that must be some kind of joke, yes? Don't waste my time with that superstitious nonsense. Again, it is. I mean, they have some sort of weird energy that's recorded, but really, for all we know, that could attract the monsters. So let's head up and meet our friendly pilot up here. Where the heck is she? She's normally always in here, and she's very rarely anywhere else on the base. And that's like two days in a row I've not been able to see her. Where the heck did she spend the mornings? So yes, I'm going to be running around. And it's almost time for this episode to end. So I'm going to leave it here. And next time we'll catch up on day four.